Well, I'm on an adventure all on my own today because I booked myself on um, a sea survival course. Um, you don't have to do that as part of the Yacht Masters, um, but I just thought it would be a good idea to um, go on the course and see what it's like. So hopefully I'll be reporting back. Well, I'm a wee bit apprehensive. There's a swimming pool behind me. And any minute now, I'm going to get jump in there, fully dressed. So, that's, uh, you have to do, for the sea survival, you do the theory, which I've done this morning, and now it's on to the practical. And I'm definitely apprehensive. We started by jumping into the pool. Our first volunteer used his own life jacket and it inflated really quickly. Hey! When you are swimming, you need to use either the backstroke or the butterfly stroke. His life jacket also came with a hood, which is a really good idea and stops you swallowing seawater. We all wore our normal sailing gear so that the training would be similar to what you'd experience in a real disaster. So we can see our intrepid volunteers jumping into the water and you just might be able to make out Gaynor doing her video camera stuff over there. But we're, of course we're all waiting for the moment of glory, we're all waiting for Gaynor to jump in. And with a bit of luck, she'll remember to take the waterproof camera into the pool with her and not the other one. The moment of glory approaches. If you have no crotch strap, you need to keep your hand over the life jacket to keep it from rising over your head. But as you can see, I haven't fitted it correctly because the bladders separated at the bottom. So knowing how to fit your life jacket is really important. We started by practicing some basic maneuvers called the crocodile and the huddle. If you're floating on your own, you tend to uh, face oncoming waves. In the huddle, only one person faces the waves and you're able to support someone who is not wearing a life jacket. This manoeuvre, called the crocodile, is for when you need to swim to the life raft or rescue vessel. It lets you support each other in, some, in case someone is tired or a poor swimmer. It's really hard to do and I need more practice. And they got Captain Chaos to pull the cord. Yep, Captain Chaos had inflated it upside down. Once the life raft was upright, we simulated leaving our sinking boat and getting into the life raft. This is keep the kettle boiling, this is. We used the same opportunity to practice leaving the life raft. Well, I currently look like a drowned rat, but that's only because I am. 
and uh, I'm now going to um, get into a life raft um, climbing in uh, from uh, the sea. So that'll be interesting and very wet I reckon. As sailors we are often told to never to step down into a life raft. Stay with the boat as long as possible and this means you'll need to climb into the life raft. So guess what we did next? And it's not all that easy. I struggle to find some of the steps. It's not quite going to plan for Gainer. Are we all? Oh, got another one. Sorry. Roll call. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, if I thought getting into a life raft was hard, I've now got to write it. So these are all good, important things that um, you do and there's nothing like actually doing it yourself. Um, so I would highly recommend the Sea Survival Course. One hazard is that the sea anchors have weights in them and you do not want them hitting your head. However, when you right the raft, it does land on your head. <laughs> <laughs> well having a live raft on top of you is definitely a very scary thought but it's always um, a scary feeling I mean but uh, when I was coming out uh, my little toggle here got caught in one of the uh, ropes and it was like oh my goodness and having that clear head uh, in an emergency situation now I'm not in emergency but having that clear head in the most situation I can imagine being very hard. <laughs> the final step was to join all our learning together and do that in one go. So now you're back from the sea survival course, um, what do we need to change on board Salty Lass? What did you learn? Oh, I learned loads, Bev. Um, one of the things that we went over was the grab bag, and this is what we've currently got. So, not really good. We've got plenty of fresh air in the grab bag. <laughs> That's true, but nothing much else. So what should we be putting in it? Well, we should be putting some first aid equipment, um, some survival equipment, you know, like um, fishing line. Um, we do have a knife in the um, life raft, but maybe an extra knife and a floating one at that. Um, you know, so we need some essential equipment. Some food would be nice. Protein bars, water, stuff like that, really. Yeah. What about radios? Yes, well, we do have our um, radio, um, which we will take with us. 
Uh, so we'll just have to make sure that that is always charged. Um, also, um, uh, obviously, this is just this is ours is for five miles. Um, you know, but if there is at least a boat far far enough away that you can see it, we should be able to get them. So that's uh, an essential, really. Uh, did they say anything about life jackets? They sort of said quite a lot about life jackets um, and uh, maintaining your life jackets. And uh, we'll probably uh, produce another video on safety on Salty Lass uh, later on uh, that will cover that. Um, but uh, one of the things is, um, you know, to maintain your life jacket. And is there any particular type of life jacket that is preferred over others? Well, on the um, course, um, I had a life jacket that didn't have a crotch strap and um, it kept on riding up. And I can see why everybody uh, recommends a crotch strap. Uh, then um, one of the guys, he had a hood over his face. Now, um, if you're in the water on your own, um, you'll tend towards uh, pointing to the waves so the waves will be coming over you so at least if you had a hood that will mean that that's um, you know you've not got a problem from you're that. not getting water in your face you're not getting water in your face that's why the huddle uh, was quite useful because in the huddle uh, at least um, only one person has got the face to the waves um, the other people have at least got a break from that um, but yeah, I mean, so I was in the water and it was flat, calm in the, in the, um, swimming pool and I still got water in my face. So having that, um, hood would be really good. I believe there was, um, a section on attitude and that we're going to link to a Ray Mears video and we'll put an end screen at the end of the video. What can you tell me about that? Well, basically, um, you know, we've, I've watched it with Bev as well. Uh, all about attitude and uh, having the right mental attitude is uh, really good. The other thing is um, just being prepared um, and that's why um, we've got to look at our um, grab bag because we're just not prepared. So was it worth the time, effort and money? Oh absolutely, I mean say um, you know it, it was a day, um, the course up here in uh, Northern Ireland cost £150 for the day, um, but I thought it was well worth it. Bev and I, um, we've got a book as well, but Bev and I are going to go through the book um, together um, and also we're going to go swimming um, and practice some of the moves so that we can work as a team because that's important. Thank you.